Hi all, this is Dana here. In this video I'm going to be showing you a little technique uh, that a couple of people actually have been asking me about in the comments of these videos and on my website. Uh, I've had quite a few people, like if they watch my beginners tutorials, they'll see that I uh, do my cross stitch. So I go from one corner to the next and then do a half a stitch that way and then come back and do that way. And uh, it's just for, for the tutorials and I've had a few people asking me, well, I usually do the, the full stitch at once. Is that wrong? Is there a right way? Is there a wrong way? Things like that. So what I'm going to show you in this video is I'm going to be showing you that there actually are two right ways and what they're called. So I'm going to be starting off here. and. Uh, Incidentally, I'm using a new lighting box right now. I just got um, to see if it'll help with the lighting of these videos. So if you like it, just let me know in the video below. So I'm just going to go over two just to show you the stitches a little bit easier. Um, so there's the two methods of making your actual cross, like for full cross stitch. There's the English method, and then there's the Danish method. And I'll show you the English method right now. So the English method is you do your one stitch and then your other stitch. So you're going both directions. So you're completing your stitch at once. So you are going to be completing each stitch before you move on to the next one. Alright, so that's the English method there. The Danish method, which is what I use in uh, some of my tutorials, and you can travel any direction. You can go vertically or horizontally with this. For this sake, I'll do horizontally. Is you're going to be doing half of your stitch at once. And then you're going to come back and do it going the other direction. So this is Danish. So it's almost like the English, you're just doing it one at a time. The Danish, you're going for a little walk first doing half of your row and then coming back and doing the other half. Alright, I'll just finish this up. And there isn't a lot of difference as far as, um, like obviously the finished stitches still look the same, but sometimes like say if, um, like I tend to do what's called cross country stitching and I'll put a link to that in the video below, um, which is basically going across, you know, a decent sized section of my pattern in one color and then once I finish that color up, then doing the next color and things like that. Some people prefer parking, which is going across one row horizontally and then coming back, doing each color as you as you see it. So obviously, if you're doing parking, you're going to be wanting to do the English method because you're doing each stitch individually and your, your thread's traveling this way. Uh, if you're doing cross country, quite often what you'll find is you maybe have like a section of stitches going this way and then no more stitches until down here type thing. So you're going to want to travel your thread out this way, doing half of your stitches at once, come back, and then you're closer to, to doing these stitches maybe that are down here. So that's pretty much the only difference is sort of how you're traveling across your pattern. I actually do a mix of both when I'm stitching. Uh, it depends on like sort of how many stitches are clustered in an area, whether I'm traveling vertically or horizontally, things like that. Uh, quite often people find doing the Danish stitches works really easily if you're going vertically. So you go up this way and then down and then up and then down. Quite often people find that uh, an easy and a quick way of, of stitching, especially if you're using uh, the sewing method, which is, um, I, I'll link that to that video as well in the description below. Basically that's just where you don't use a hoop, you just put it in your hand and stitch, and that way your needle actually stays on the top. And doing the Danish method with the sewing method is actually really, really quite quick. So you can see on the back here, oh, sorry for the threads getting caught up, so you can see on the back that your travel patterns are just a little bit different this one you're doing each stitch at a time, this one you're going out and then coming back. So if you're somebody who really, really, really likes having a really neat back, sometimes the Danish method can result in a neater back, but it does depend how you're traveling, whether you're going really evenly across or whether you're kind of meandering all over the place. For me, I don't really worry too much about what the back looks like, as long as it's neat enough that it's not going to create issues from the front. Um, again, I have a, a video for that. I'll put that in the description as well. So that's it. So that's it's a really short little video, but yeah, so you can see the English method one at a time, Danish method going out and then coming back. So there is no right or wrong way. Do whatever works best for you. Have an experiment and have a try and see which one you like. Let me know which one you like best in the comments below. I'm always interested to see how people like to stitch. And uh, if you'd like to access the free 
uh, cross stitch patterns uh, that are available at peacockandfig.com. Please just uh, click on the little link that's going to pop up on the, the right of your screen right now, and you can uh, sign up to become a member of the Peacock Lounge. It's totally free, and then you get access to the um, members only patterns, and you get uh, notifications of new giveaways, blog posts, tutorials, things like that as well. So, yeah, if you have any questions, please feel free to let me know below, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye for now!